I, I would argue too. I mean, you're creating your life. Hopefully, you're creating a fucking cool one. You might be just painting by numbers, right? Because you're you don't feel like you can step out on a limb, so you're just kind of following the path that's been provided for you. But like, you're creating a life, whether you like it or not. everything in general i don't know i think we should just create it we'll see (laughs) yeah so um we're live by the way i think uh hello everybody hello i think um i saw one of your instagram posts a while back i think it was last week and you were like you know always creating and i think that's the day you were talking about where you're starting to work on all these new programs for softly and it, that like resonated with me because right now, like obviously, I'm getting out of the Navy to just literally try to just create full time. And uh, I think it, it's interesting because if you look at, I mean, humans are the only animal with the ability to create, right? Yeah. If you look at every other animal, we're the only ones that have the ability to sort of take something just for the art of it. And that's what I like about programming, and that's actually what I like really like about your programming. It's like you can tell the people that take programs seriously because it's like a legitimate art. And I think that um, what I wanted to do today was talk about how you kind of go about the program process, how you like are starting to create. And also too, like how to even think about things that you create. Because I know even with me with doing the morning coffee episodes, people are always asking me like, where are you coming up with this shit? So I thought maybe we could just talk about both of our kind of individual creative, creative processes. And then um, I don't know, just see where that goes. Yeah, definitely. You know, I, it's funny you bring this up because, like I said, I just got a, I got an email just a minute ago for our, for work. We're going to be doing like our one-year get-together for Softly where we sit and get together and we create and plan and just put out our thoughts and stuff like that as a group so that we all know that we're moving in the same direction for the next year for the company. Um, and it's something that, you know, has been really cool to be a part of since the start of the company. We've done this every year and you just see it continue growing and growing and growing. We do have like mini checks, you know, along that time period to do that. So... Yeah, last week, especially, dude, because of the fact that, obviously, I just got done running my running my race, um, and it's funny, I've been joking about it lately, is I'm trying to re, reestablish my new lifestyle because of the fact that I'm not focusing on just managing and creating around running only. Uh, I'm, now I have time to sit here, and I have some extra hours in my hands now, so we're like, all right, what can I do with it? How am I going to be very efficient with it? How am I going to create and develop you know, programs and ideas and just different things from there to go ahead and put me in a place where I'm successful. I, I think that's that's where it comes down to. And, and, you know, it's funny that we talked about the whole idea also of like, how do you, you look at your programming, you look at creating as an art, right? And I think I've talked about on the show before and some of like online heart radio about like how I approach programming. And it's actually just gotten even more deeper than that, right? And the way I call it is like, I feel like you just like kind of level up in the way you build and develop and create what you're looking at because you create more experiences, um, you know, with that realm. So, you know, I'll use painting, for example, you know, people learn how to finger paint, mm-hmm. right? And that's a, that's one way to create. And then all of a sudden now we go ahead and introduce them to these paint brushes and these levels of paint brushes. And from there now, that's the next step in creating, right? Now I've learned how to add a certain stroke a certain way. I learned how to blend a certain way. I learned how to blend these two colors in. That's just another way of creating and developing something. And then from, you know, from this piece of, from finger painting to now you have, you know, your brush. Now you go to a scalpel and now you're painting with the scalpel and now you're using acrylic paint, you know, and all these different things. And you just start becoming that's more, that much more versatile in creating. So I think you have to spend time creating to learn how to create and you really have to develop like your own style. And that, that could be the end of the show, right? We can say like, that's the end of the show and that's it, but we're not going that way. And, And the reason why I say it is because of the fact that it does take trial and error for you to be able to develop that, but you also have to take others' creativity and their examples and ways how they create things for you to develop your own, just like everything else. Yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm reading a book right now called The Artist's Journey, and one of the things he talks about is when you are when you start to create something, and I've noticed this with programming, I've noticed it a lot more with writing, especially when I was working on my last book, but when you're creating something, like, man, you don't even know where those ideas are coming from. No. You know what I mean? Like, I've literally sat down and wrote 5,000 words, and I'm like, I didn't fucking know any of that before I started. Like, I don't even know, like, where do thoughts even come from? Like, where the hell was that buried? Um, And I think that's when you know, like, 
you're you're creating the thing you're supposed to be creating in the world because you reach that flow state where you know time just basically is stand still and you just get so deep into the process you you get in that flow state and you you come up with all of these ideas that you never even knew existed prior to starting yeah dude it's funny and we all have our own different ways of doing it i know for instance like when i when i'm thinking about like writing a development a program for some reason, dude, and it just naturally happens to me. For instance, for example, today, like, um, I was sitting on the air bike today over at the gym while I was getting back in the training. I was doing an air bike. I did like a 10 minute MRAP, uh, at like 67% of 15 cows of air bike, uh, three Turkish get-ups, each arm, one rope climb for 10 minutes. I've got like four rounds, nothing crazy. But while I'm on the bike ro- riding, I'm like, how could I make this st- this a different stimulus to go ahead and produce a different types of adaptation right now i'm focusing on just movement and aerobic development and just kind of moving flush in the system but if i wanted to go ahead and make this a little bit harder how would i adjust the program from there right i automatically realize now that i'm always in this creative mindset always boom boom yeah. boom 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 and i'm like without even thinking or realizing it but when it happens i realize that okay i'm in a very good place right now i.e the flow state right you know that's that thing, right? And, and a flow state isn't, and everyone gets confused with the flow state, right? And we talk about it, a flow state can be where you're doing something super challenging and it puts you in a, a place where you're like, boom, here. Or people think it's, oh, it's no, it's when you're meditating and you've access, accessed, you know, the prefrontal cortex and you've gone from ABC. And it's like, no, realistically, your flow state's gonna be whatever you, you feel that gets you into a creative mode, right? Some people like to put music on and get creative that way and put them through a flow state. Some people like to smoke a bowl and put on some hippie sound music and start creating. Some people like pure silence. Mm-hmm. Some people, you know, it all works different for each other, right? You know? So going back to the the whole conversation of like how to create and the way I look at it, Monday I took about four hours to just think. Literally four hours just to think. I was like, all right, cool. And like I'm playing things in my head left and right. I'm like, all right, cool. Like I need to do this for this kind of program. How would I approach it? For instance, developing a 5K program for the softly program, right? And I was like, all right, well, where do I want to take this? Do I want it to be an advanced program? I want it to be intermediate. I want it to be a beginner. Or do I want it to be an, a program that any athlete can benefit from? Beginner, intermediate, and advanced. And I was like, I want to go ahead and make sure it's intermediate or beginner, intermediate, and advanced. I want it to be for all levels. Mm. Why? Because, and I, and I was like, well, let me go and focus on aerobic development instead of this 5k run and for two weeks we'll go ahead and push the anaerobic style stuff in there speed work and then go back and test it out again i was like but guess what the way i thought about it I was like well an advanced athlete doesn't train high intensity 24 7 so they can utilize this in an off-season program oh intermediate athlete is still in that like train to race type train to like compete type aspect well it's the perfect program for them intermediate right and then when i look at the at the beginner, I look at, oh, they're at a train, like learn how to practice, learn to play, right? Learn how to do things. I was like, oh, it's perfect. Like, it's not hard. It's not, it's not easy, but it will challenge them to develop new skills. I was like, there it is. Yeah. Right. All right, cool. Like, but that was me just sitting down in my house, like reading a book, walking around, walking the dogs. That was me. Like, it wasn't me sitting behind my computer. It wasn't me sitting behind a piece of paper and doing whatever. It was me literally just throwing things in my head and seeing how it would work. And it's weird. I, I know a lot of people do it differently, but like for me, that's a lot of the things that I get from there. But it goes deeper than that too. And maybe for you also, for instance, like when I'm on long training runs or long swims, I do the same thing again. I start like, for instance, swimming, my eyes are open, look at the fucking bottom of the white floor. So I start like building out a spreadsheet and like how I want to look at things. When I was, it, it's, it's weird kind of get that. And all of a sudden I put that together when I actually focus, sit down and just want to go ahead and put everything on paper at that time and moment. Yeah. I like that you said that. I like that this idea that you sort of unplug and think before you before you start making a program because it sort of gives you all right, first you're like, okay, I want to create a five K program. Well that could be a very huge array of shit, right? Because like you mentioned, there's so many skill levels and there's you know, with each skill level comes a different movement proficiency and so you look at all these things. I think it's really cool to mention that just because people that do want to program for themselves or for or other coaches that might be listening to this like it's important to start with a framework right and so by you just thinking about it and kind of being unplugged and thinking about okay well who who is the kind of person that's going to benefit from this and who and what kind what are they like and what is their movement proficiency and and so then you can kind of narrow it down so 
at first you have nothing but a blank canvas, right? And yeah. then you add the framework, and then you're like, okay, so now I got the framework. Now I can start plugging in the different pieces that are going to be applicable for that framework. And you know, I do the same thing when I write. I was I was thinking about this other the other day when I when I write or when I create the morning coffee episodes. What I do is I sort of have a framework, like I have a belief about everybody, and then I plug my thoughts into that belief. So I believe that every single person in the world has a picture of who they want to be in the world, and I think there's a gap between who they want to be and where they are currently. And so then when I create content, now I have um, a framework. I'm putting my content into that framework, and I'm like, okay, so then I need to create things that help people get from where they are to where I know that they want to be. And it's kind of like the same idea. It doesn't matter really what you're creating. You start with that blank canvas, but first you really got to think about the direction you want to take it so you're not kind of fucking all over the place, you know? Yeah, and one key word that I love there too, bro, and it's funny, we keep fucking bouncing off each other, it's just what we do, is the word belief. And I think that's the problem where a lot of people come into into play here is where they might be able to do this like conception of their of their idea, right? They might be able to create this idea of theirs. They might be able to get in that flow state, but then they don't believe in themselves or believe in what they're doing. So then guess what happens to that whole process? It goes right back to, let me just go dump it into the trash can, empty trash can and restart again, when potentially if they had an ounce of belief in themselves or in that idea, they could actually go past that phase. Yeah, I agree. I I think it was the founder of LinkedIn that and this is more along the lines of creating business, but it, it definitely is applicable you know, yeah. no matter what you want to do. But the founder of LinkedIn said, if you're not embarrassed by your first version, you waited too long to start. And it's like, that's true, man. Like, yeah. you know, like I go back and I listen to the beginning of Lionheart Radio and I'm like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But you got to get there. You got to get, you got to, you got to iterate. That's, that's what creation is, right? It's like, yeah. as you build that framework, then you start plugging things in. You're not going to just, you know, that's why we always did a rough draft in school. Like, I don't think school was great for a lot of things, but how, it, how to formulate thoughts is one of the things it is good for, how to build a, a framework for how you think about things. And so um, same thing, you know, just like that. It's like your, your first version can suck. It's okay. Yeah. You know, like you, it doesn't matter if you're programming, if you're writing a book, if you're it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Start a business, write a business model, like anything, dude. Yeah, I, start a business. I think that's a lot of where we, we end up now as human beings in nature, right? Like you said, like I'm reading a book right now called Behave, actually, and the author's name is Robert uh, Spolowski, um, but it's called Behave, and it's called The Biological of Humans to Our Best and Worst, and oh, cool. he actually references a shit ton of things back to um, Babylon, uh, to like baboons. To um, baboons? Yeah. Oh, so he takes like an evolutionary biological perspective. Yeah, Very that's cool. exactly what it is. But I mean, dude, the, this book's 800 pages long. I ha, like I'm like on the first chapter and I'm already reading an appendix because I got to learn about neuroscience one on one just to move through the book. Yeah. Like yeah. this is how like this is how deep the book is. But the great thing that I love about the book and when we keep going back to the fact of that is like baboons didn't know how to create. Right. They didn't have that. Like we're the only mammals, humans that can do it. But what they did have was trial and error. Mm. Right. So like you, t- for instance, true. we tell a baby, don't put your hand inside that inside that socket. What does the baby do? Right. Puts their hand inside of it because they haven't really developed that creativity aspect. They haven't really learned how to do that yet because they're they're still forming. Right. They're still trying to understand. And all of a sudden now they go and boom, they oh, no, I can't touch that again because it's going to fucking shock me. It's bad. Yeah. Right. Time goes on. They start realizing, oh, I remember doing that. That was that was a learning a learning example. Right. So when we go back and look at creating, I think it comes down to being able to have a trial and error at all times and what you're doing and not being afraid to understand that this trial is probably not going to fucking happen. Right. You right. know, for, for for college students who are writing thesis papers. Right. Like that right there, bro, is trial and error. You know? Yeah, for sure. I think, um, I actually wrote about that concept of programming our minds and it's in my newest book, but, um, you know, one thing to, that's really interesting about that is we are taught, basically our parents and our teachers are teaching us a way to navigate the world without fucking ourselves up too bad, right? So they say, yeah. hey, if the stove is hot, don't touch it. 
And then you go touch the stove because that's what humans do. And then we burn ourselves. And then if you have good parents, they come over, they run it under cold water and they tell you, that's why we don't touch the stove. And then you believe them a little bit more when they tell you the next thing not to touch, right? Because you already fucked yourself up. And so if you think about all of the beliefs that you probably have about the world and about yourself are probably a... um, they're probably a relic of that flow chart. If hot, yeah. don't touch. And then the, the goal is hopefully that your parents instill enough in you that you don't go around touching every fucking hot stove that you see, <laughs> right? Or shoving your hand in every light socket. But yeah. what's interesting to me is, okay, so that's a very deep patterning and programming that's like put in your mind. Well, if you want to be something else in the world, you want to create something else, you want to be somebody better, you have to go back through that programming and you need to figure out what you've been programmed to believe that's actually fucking you up right now and holding you back. Yeah. And that's that can be really difficult to do. And that's the reason why I said that key word there is belief, bro. I think the, the key word around it is like having the belief that it's going to work, right? Because then that right there is going to go in. We talk about passion. We talk about purpose. We talk about drive. We talk about it all that time, right? Like we're not trying to do that here. But being able to understand that like having the belief belief not just in yourself, but in that creation that you're doing, that it's going to provide some kind of purpose for somebody is right. going to be key, right? Like you wouldn't have wrote your first book if you didn't believe in what you had in that book, right? Like I wouldn't have like sacrificed what I've sacrificed to be in the position that I am now with, you know, enjoying what I'm doing, but creating all the time at the same time, they'll still trying to, you know, all those kinds of like, those are the ideas that I look at, right? Like trial and error, right? How many times have you fucking written your book, you know, for a chapter or two or three or maybe five and then deleted it completely? Right. Oh yeah. I told, I told uh, somebody the other day, oh, I was on a podcast earlier. I was on the Alpha Hippie project earlier and I was like, dude, writing a book is like walking into the woods with a fucking ax and not leaving until you built a log cabin. Pretty much. You are just chopping at shit. A bunch of it's not going to work out. You're going to chop shit at the wrong size. Like, you know, it just is what it is. But like, that's I think that idea it's like you go in with a basic idea of what you want to do but then the create through the creative process you you'll you'll iterate you'll see that some things don't work like you wanted them to and the programming's the same way you'll get done and then you'll look at it from a different perspective or sometimes we have to create something and then step away from it completely I was about and to then go, go back and look at it and then you're like ah, okay so that's probably not going to make as much sense as I thought that's funny you say that, dude, because actually I'm doing that right now too. So I'm writing a I'm writing a blog right now for Marine Ultra uh, Ultra Runners. It's this club association for all Marines who are ultra runners. Oh, cool. And I'm writing a blog right now on caffeine, the effects on it during a race, just because I had that prior experience within my race. And why did? Because like some athletes, some ultra runners can take 300 milligrams of caffeine and be completely fucking fine. Yeah, I can. You, like you could yeah. me no like i don't drink enough coffee a day or put that much coffee in my system to handle that right uh right so book. that'll change that no sh- <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah 100 um, percent. so like i'm writing this blog right now but i was like when i first started creating the blog you know i did my steps of writing something you know i created my my brainstorming i created my spider with my outline and i was like all right cool i have the i have like my key topics in my book right now in front of me i was like all right cool i want to go but then all of a sudden as i started creating this creating the blog all of a sudden it started leading me off even deeper to where i wanted to go and i'm like wait a minute like this wasn't on paper why is it on the computer now right and i'm not going to delete it because it flows it makes sense it's going where i want to go it's just that much more in depth now to where i'm going and i look at it as growth it is just growth and how i learn how to create that i no longer have to sit here and stick to a b c and d I can now stick to, oh, here's A. Well, here's A1, here's A2, here's A3. Okay, let's go to B now. Now I'm on B, though. Here's B1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh, now I'm on C. Now here's C1, 2, 3, 4. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm now just created this thing of where I just had four points to where now I can elaborate and create even more information to just justify or give more power and belief to A. Right. Right? I'm just supporting and just creating that. And that's something that. I've really taken to heart now, right? Like if I start doing something and it starts coming in and it starts going, I'm going to leave it there and kind of see how it looks and then go from there. Right. Right. Yeah. And I think that probably comes from just creating itself. You start to learn your own style and you, you develop a system that works for you. Um, I do, I do a very similar thing. Like I write essays for, for my own website now uh, every once in a while, less now that I'm working on my book so much, but my pro I have a process. Like I will bang the whole thing out. 
and I'll be super happy with it. And I also know I'm going to go read it a couple days later and there's a bunch of shit I'm going to change. So no matter how bad I want to hit publish, I like have this process of like, nope, now I got to go back and I'm going to refine and I'm going to chop. And then the other thing is when you, I, this is a reason I like to create in the morning. Like I like to write in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, I like to program in the morning because what happens is you go through the first process where you kind of have to mine for thoughts because you're, it's early, whatever you're drinking coffee, you're trying to figure it out. But then you you start mining for all these thoughts and you get them down on paper. Well, now your brain is going for the rest of the day. So even when you stop creating for the – like I know to me I'm only good till about noon. Like I, I'm not creating shit after noon really. I can do podcasts and stuff, but I can't write anymore. Like that's it for me. But I'll be thinking about it constantly. And then maybe at like 6 o'clock that night I'll be on a run and some thought will pop in my head that I'm like, ah, I can bolster that point better by adding X, Y, or Z. Um, and so that's why I think it's super important to, to for me anyway, to create in the morning because it gets your thought process going down that, that road. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm the same way, man. And like going back to the old caffeine article that I'm writing right now, mm-hmm. I literally went through two of my points and I and like two of my points are literally a page already long, page and a half long. And I'm still not even halfway through it yet, right? So it's like I'll go back and read it on like Friday. My Friday mornings are my mornings that I like to just do a little more programming, creating sometimes Saturday and Sunday, um, just because just it's just I, it's just what I like to do, man. Like I don't know about other people listening, but people say like, oh, I like to enjoy my day off. Like yeah, that's my day off. I like to I like to just go write or I like to go read or I like to create something. Like it's just kind of what it is. Um, but yeah, you know, when I go back and look at it this weekend, I'm probably going to be like, okay, I like where I'm going, and now I have new ideas and examples of what I want to put in there to make that program that much better. And again, like we look at Rome and Rome's a fucking beautiful, beautiful town, right? Beautiful city. How long was it built though? It took a fucking long time to build. And we hear that saying all the time, right? Yeah, Rome right. wasn't built in a day. Right. So to have something so beautiful take so long, I believe that's the same exact thing with when we create product and put things out also. Yeah, patience is fucking key. I mean, like I said, I when I'll bang out an article in the morning, I want to publish that bitch, but I'm like, dude, it's I know it's not the best it could be. Like, I know I got to go back and read it later. I know I got to add more stuff. I got to do more editing. So um, I think that patience is key. And then the other thing, too, is like, you know, like I said it at some point during this conversation, but it's like you have an idea of what you're trying to create. And you might get, start flushing ideas out and you might, it's going to, you're going to iterate and you're going to mold, you know, um, sometimes this is what I noticed with Louis Vive. It's like, sometimes you think that you're building your house and you're just laying the fucking ground floor. Like you're just (laughs) laying the framework. Like I thought with Louis Vive, my supplement company, I was like, I'm building the thing that's going to be my thing for the rest of my life. I thought I was building my house. No, I was just learning business practices. I was refining. I was networking. I was meeting. I was grabbing all of these skill sets that I was going to use at a later thing I care about more, which for me was writing, right? And so it's like, and podcasting. So it's interesting. Like you never know, you got to be open to the idea that you're like a medium for whatever this is being created. This thing's ready to go into the universe. You're, you're the channel that's going to get it there. So don't be, don't try to be so controlling over it. Like sometimes we want to really grip tightly to what we create. It's like, I don't even know where these ideas come from. So I really can't own them, you know? Yeah, no, no, that's 100%. And I think, so, like, it comes down to this, man, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the way I look at it, too, is, like, a lot of what we create and a lot of what we develop and a lot of what we think and what we put on paper comes from a worldview aspect of how we have been raised. For sure. Yeah. Right? Like, every 100%. single thing every single thing that we do has that, right? So we create our experiences, so then all of a sudden we have these new ideas to create, which is why it's pretty awesome to be able to sit here and be like, Hey, like it's good to go out and create new experiences, like, and go do things you've never done because it's going to put you in a new place in someone else's shoes because you probably never been there, put you in someone else's shoes to realize now like, Oh wow. Okay, cool. Now I can add this to my foundation, which is also going to go ahead and set me up for whatever I want to create down the road. I mean, let's be real here, right? Like could you write as well as you're writing right now without the experiences that you've created? Not, not in the least. I like couldn't agree with you anymore. Truthfully, like I, nothing gets me creating more than being uncomfortable or out of my routine. Um, this yeah. last week, you know, I, I went for, I went to Washington, I went to Portland, Oregon, then I flew to Portland, Maine, then I went to Boston, then I went to San Diego, then I went to Malibu, and then I went to Vegas, and I have like content is pouring out of me like right now I spent all day creating recording morning coffees writing and like I'm going to do the same thing for the next couple weeks um 
because there's something about pulling you outside of your routine that mm-hmm. allows you to to look at the world in a different way. Like it's your like you were saying you however you were raised you see the world in a certain way. Um, that might not be the most beneficial way to see the world. You have to like question what you've been programmed in order to know whether you actually believe those thoughts or whether those thoughts have just been programmed in you. And seeing the world is the best way to do that, in my opinion. Yep. Like, you know, if you want to stay in your hometown, stay in one place your whole life, like that's a great that's a great life plan for a fucking tree. But like, you're not, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the the seed falls and it grows right the fuck there. But that's not you. That's not us. Like we were born for adventure and experience and. The more of that you expose yourself to, the more you're going to be able to channel when it comes to creating what you want in the world. A hundred percent, dude. I, I couldn't agree with you more on that either. And it kind of goes into the whole idea too, right? Like you just said, you literally took last Monday all the way till pretty much this Monday off. Like didn't do much, didn't touch your computer, didn't do whatever else. And the same thing happened to you on your sailboat expedition. Like yeah. you came back from that and you were just creating, right? And I think what happens is, and it's a lot like... I look at our, our brain's a muscle, right? I'm going to say that. No matter, anybody can tell me, no, it's not whatever else. Who gives a fuck? It's a muscle. We use it every single day, mm-hmm. right? It gets tired just like a fucking muscle. So it's a muscle, you know? And the way I look at it is like, all right, cool. Depending on what you're doing, right? Depending on what you're doing, we can look at a artist who plays in a fucking band who tours for a year long. Like, do they get to create during that time frame? No, why? Because they've been doing what for the whole fucking time? Playing a concert every single day for that whole year. But when they come off that concert, that type, that side of the brain shuts off and guess what activates now? The creative side, right? All of a sudden now I'm like, oh, I'm gonna take everything that happened during this time period and throw it over here and see what pops out on the opposite side, right? But this only can last so long also. We can only create, create, create for so long. And then from there we gotta like, all right, cool. We gotta take a break. People like us who are always looking to create all the time, we have to set up breaks just like we set up deloads in fucking in our strength training or endurance training, right? Yeah. So maybe every four, I mean, you know, something, maybe, all right, cool. I'm going to go hard for two weeks, deload for a week. I'm going to go hard for creating for three weeks. I'm going to deload for a week, you know, because I do notice, I'm pretty sure you notice it also is the fact that sometimes that fourth week when we be going hard for multiple weeks, it's like, I don't know what the fuck, I don't know what to put down. Everything looks like garbage right now to me. I just don't know what to do. And you keep fighting it, you keep fighting it, you keep fighting it. And all of a sudden you're just like, you know what, I'm done. Cool. I'm not quitting. Right. I'm just sitting there and being like, all right, cool. Like, all right, let's give it up and good. Same thing in our day, right? Like, I'm pretty sure you take breaks from creating morning coffees and doing stuff like that, right? Like, there's just different ways that you have to understand to give your brain a break so you're able to come back at it and keep killing it. Yeah, like life isn't linear. You can't just think that the amount of work you put in is a result you're going to get back because there's an adaptation phase that has to take place. And, you know, like you just said, like that's how you program. That's that's how hard work like actually works in the real world too. Like it, for me, I look at taking unplugging and going on these adventures as like I have to be disciplined enough to do them. And people are like, oh, like poor you. You have to be disciplined enough to go on an adventure. But I'm like... Well, no, I'm saying that's what I need, literally, in order to keep creating what I want in the world, because if I don't, I fucking, I, it's a law of diminishing returns. I'm not going to be able to keep creating at the same pace I am. I get burnt out. You, Your ideas grow stagnant, and I need to see the world in a different way. Yeah. You know, you know James Fitzgerald says it's the best, bro. Um, he, you know, learn, create, and move, right? Like, learn, create, and move, right? Learn, like, you create, or it says create, learn, move, I'm sorry. Um and it's create something, you learn from it, and then you move on from it. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Right? I, and I, he might not use it in that same context, but that's the way I look at it as, right? Like, I created something, I'm learning about it, and what I could do better, and then I move forward with what I just learned from creating something, and now I just added another brick to my house that I'm building right now. Yeah, sure. You know? Yeah. That's exactly what I look at that as. You know, like, that's one of the reasons that artists take psychedelics and they do do so many drugs to write like people are like you know like i remember i can't remember who it was but um i was listening to somebody at some point talk shit <laughs> i was listening to somebody talk shit about an artist doing drugs but it's like they're literally doing that so that they can look at the world through a different point of view right because that's what like psychedelics do. you take psychedelics it fucking tears your mainframe out whatever you thought you knew about the world completely different all of it's gone now you you're looking at everything through a completely new lens 
And so that's why people do stuff like that. That's why people that a lot of people like feel like they need to smoke weed in order to write songs. Maybe they actually do because they need to look at the world differently because they're too static in their thought process, which is why I, why I channel adventure for that exact same thing. I gotta, I gotta change it up. I gotta look differently. hundred percent. Dude. Like I can agree to that. Like for me, you know, utilizing CBD and utilizing THC and, you know, those kinds of things and going on long runs, adventures, and just taking my mind off of things is a huge, huge point, bro. And being able to continue produce like legitimate, like ideas that are going to make sense. Right. Right. Because at the end of the day, it's like, all right, cool. Like we talked about, all right, we want to create something. We got to create this flow state and then we got to create this belief system. And then we got to go ahead and add in our worldview to it along with now we're going to go ahead and see trial and error. And then from those trial and errors, what am I going to do from there? It's a fucking process. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and it can be a lot for a lot of people who are not used to it. Right. And I think that, I think every human being should do some kind of creative work, no matter what it is. Right. I like, I like, I, I like how many, like we look in, like, and I don't know how many of our listeners do anything creative, right? Like paint, draw, write, you know, just create whatever. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Just create something. And, and when you get done creating it, actually check yourself, do like a body awareness, like check and be like, Oh, well, how do I feel about that? Yeah. Right. Right. Like I know when I hear people talk about creating something or doing something or whatever else, it, it, it it's fucking cool to know that like you tapped into a part of the brain that we only have, right? Like no other mammal can say they have that, right. but we do. And you tapped into it. And, and that's I, fucking cool. I, I would argue too, I mean, you're creating your life. Hopefully you're creating a fucking cool one. You might be just painting by numbers, right? Because you don't feel like you can step out on a limb. So you're just kind of following the path that's been provided for you. But like you're creating a life whether you like it or not. And so um, for that reason, I think that that's uh that's another reason you should create because it's that's gonna you know if you have this artistic outlet you're good that those things are going to transcend to the rest of your life one of the most um one of the most beneficial exercises i've ever done is i took a hundred i went one through a hundred and that goal was to write down a hundred questions that you want the answer to in life oh, period and there's no other rules to it so it can literally be something hard and fast it's very tangible like Hmm, I wonder how fast I could run a mile in right now. Um, or it could be like, is love real? Is there a God? They can be like abstract, crazy things. And so you come up with these hundred things. Now, now you have all of, not only have you figured out all these things you're curious about in life, but you've started that process of curiosity. And if you look at every great mind, Albert Einstein, Da Vinci, like all of these people, they're the one thing that they have in common, the one trait they have in common is a curiosity, right? It's just like that need to know. And so when you start, these things I believe can be fostered in you because I'll tell yeah. you, when I made that list, like I started like, I was like, well, fuck, now I actually am curious about that thing. And, it, and you start pulling that thread and then you get somewhere else. So like there are exercises that you can use even if you don't feel quote unquote creative as like a, yeah. you know, might not be, feel like an artist or whatever. Um, there are definitely definitely things you can do to foster that 100 percent, dude I, and that's funny you bring that up right the whole 100 question thing or the curiosity and we are we're curious human beings and like we'll look at the adam and eve aspect right like god told them not to touch the apple and what they do and they went to go eat the apple right because just in general we're curious like well why doesn't he want me to eat the apple like what is it going to do to me like you know it's like is it really a bad thing to do or is it good like well you know he's saying it's not to do it but he's saying that like you know, so it's one of those things where it's just like curiosity is just what we do. And I think it's a, it's a very powerful uh, tool that we have and we should take advantage of it in the right way. Yeah. All and right. you might not believe in the biblical stories, for example, but that's a perfectly good archetypal story to describe human nature. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, everybody, you know, is eating that fucking apple. <laughs> I mean, I would right. like, I would without a doubt. It's funny, dude. I was talking with one of my mentor, my mentor, Dennis, dude, and he said it perfectly. Right. Like I was like, it's, we were talking about my recovery because, um, I'm actually, so you know how I utilize the three H's like for my recovery. I don't know if I've talked to this, but with you about it, right. I've done the three H's for recovery. I, I, so it looks into my endocrine system, right. My internal system. So I look at happy, hungry, and horny. That's right. right. Like 
I look at those three there and it gives me a look into, you know, my limbic system. It goes and looks into my digestive system. It goes and looks into, you know, how's my serotonin and how's my psychological aspect of that realm. Um, well, the next one I started adding in was actually heart rate. So now four H's. And I posted a post about this yesterday. Hey, the three H's was my fourth one. So here's the answer. It's fucking the heart rate um, or the heart, right? And the reason why I look at that is because of the fact that our heart's a muscle also, and it's the connection to everything we do in life, right? If our heart stopped, what happens to our body? We're dead, right? Like that's it. So we need to pay attention to it more. And a lot of people right now are utilizing heart rate variability, which is cool. I've been through that phase. I've done a podcast. I've done full on stuff about it. And like, does it have its benefits? Yes. But it's very a subjective and objective approach if you look at it, right? Because it can be manipulated through breathing work or however else. It doesn't really give you. But you can now look at just pure heart rate and look at, oh, cool. Like, I know my baseline for my heart rate. Like, my baseline heart rate, you know, when I'm healthy and recovered is like a 41 to 42. It's pretty fucking low. <laughs> and, uh, the past 10 days I've been tracking my heart rate on my own and it's been bouncing between like 48 to 52 and finally Sunday came around um, and I actually was able to see it drop down to like 43, 44 and I was like, okay, cool, I might be on the right track here. Monday morning came around and it was a 40, it was actually a 40, it was 40. So I was like, all right, cool, I'm good. Sex drive was back. I was nice and hungry. My metabolism wasn't craving every fucking thing in the world. All these other things, right? And like the whole point of the story was to understand like, I was just creating a way to help myself recover better, right? To understand like, oh, like I know my system and I know trial and error and I've known in the past when I've gotten done with something fucking big, I wanted to rush and come back right away. Right. Right. That's exactly what I was, t- what I was trying to go. It was like whole trial and error, right? And I told Dennis, uh, he goes, well, it's good to see you. He's like, it's taking you almost pretty much approximately 10 days. Um, some people are not as in tune with their body as I am, right? Again, why am I so in tune with my body? Because it's all trial and error. I know what it feels like to have lack of sex drive. I know what it feels like to be fucking moody. I know what it feels like not to have, you know, uh, uh, um, be hungry. I knew what it feel like not to have like a, a recovered heart rate because my heart would like just feel weird or I'd feel super sluggish or whatever else. And I was like, yeah, it's taking some trial and error. And I can't take, and I've, I'm, I'm happy to say I've learned from my lessons because that's really what it is, right? I've learned from my lessons of all this to bring it full circle now. We go back to the mother nature thing. He goes this, right? He set this down line. I don't know if he made this up or who he got this from, but he goes, there's no defining mother nature. Bottom line, we are still very much connected to nature biologically, and we have to learn to listen through trial and error to what is going on so that we can further ourselves within her reach. Damn, that's good. Right, bro? I was like, holy shit. Yeah. That was, that was it right there. Like, all we're trying to do is be this creative human being right now to further ourselves in Mother Nature. That's all we're trying to do right now. Yeah, right? And, and I mean, that's, that's what we've done that's what's gotten us this ability to create is the thing that's gotten us to the point where I'm talking to you on a screen and thousands of people are going to go <laughs> listen to it in their car when they're driving 60 miles an hour down the road or flying at 30,000 feet, 600 miles an hour. You know what I mean? So that's yeah. like, that's the thing. And that's why I think it's and a lot of the people that, that created those kind of, you know, industrial endeavors were not necessarily the, the right brain like we're talking about, you know? And so everybody, if you're a human, you are trying to create something. I mean, even if you listen to this show and you're trying to, uh, you're trying to just literally be a better athlete. Like most of the people that listen to the show probably listen to it because they thought we were going to talk about working out. <laughs> 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 right? And so I think that all of these people are you're you are trying to create the best version of you that you possibly can be. And in order to do that, you have to be able to get back to nature like you're saying you have to be disciplined in your approach you have to go through that trial and error and figure out what it is that's going to work for you and what's not and sometimes you got to run up against that wall and really fuck yourself up you know yeah. like when I when I ran Louis Vive and the, the supplement company I burned myself out so hard like I'd work till 1 a.m get up at four in the morning 4 30 to go do tastings and I'd do that three or four days a week and then on the other days I'd be catching up on admin and sending out orders and doing meetings I had to do that to know I couldn't fucking do that. You know what I mean? And yeah. so now when it comes to like writing my book and doing the podcast and a lot of this other stuff that I really love doing, it's like, no, I know. Like people are like, oh, you just have to go on adventures. It's like, no, I know that I have to do that if I want to be able to do this stuff long term and sustain it. And it's just like you knowing that you had to be disciplined in order to take that time off. Like that's the only way you're going to be the best version of you that you could possibly be. 
It's very unconventional, bro. That's the key word I'm gonna use here. It's a very unconventional approach to a lot of people, right? Because of the fact we go and look at that Albert Einstein's and the Da Vinci's and we look at the Pac Picasso's, like when you think about that, right? Like what was their job? What did they do for a living? They right. fucking did that. Just invent, just think, yeah. That's that's all they did, right? Like they didn't think they were doing some other stuff, right? But. But how much do they really work, though, you think about it, it's like maybe about four hours, maybe, like, you know, develop, like, actually putting it on paper, it probably took less time than it took for them to create that. Yeah. Right? And then when they were creating this on this canvas or however you want to think about it, they were still creating in that time period, right, of what they saw in their head. And now it's they're seeing it develop on paper and they're able to elaborate from that. Um, it's the same thing with the sideshow, with this whole thing. You just mentioned it right now, right? Everyone thought we were coming on here talking about performance and sports. Like, Enough people do that shit already. Like, we do it on our own. It's like, I do it for Softly's Performance Spot. You do it for Lionheart. Like, that's what we do. Yeah. Right? We wanted something completely different that would help stimulate our brain in another way to help us create in different realms. When you think about it now, we've talked about this plenty of times. We have multiple different flow charts for multiple fucking different things. Because if you look at my book, <laughs> I have flow charts from our conversation. Yeah, right. That's you cool. know? It, yeah, dude. Like, it's... It's, it's it's just like how I see my it's how I develop it right okay cool we creating all right so come creating then we flow state belief trial and error worldview experiences breaks like and, and the thing is too though is like it's applicable to all things like the, the the concepts we're talking about when we talk about managing highs and lows and we talk about creating and we talk about all of these dealing with failure and adversity and all these things we talk about on the sideshow it's like if you don't know how to do any of those things as an athlete you're going to be a real shitty athlete. Like you're going to have yeah. a very low ceiling to where you're going to be able to get at with your potential because uh, it requires, you know, being a good athlete requires like you to be a full spectrum human being. And, you know, we're taught in Western culture more and more and more, always yeah. more. And it's like, okay, well maybe more if you were a fucking robot, but as a human and you got, if you have shit to do, like if you want your life to have any kind of quality to it, then sometimes you need to prioritize that over quantity. And that's like taken me a really long time to figure that out. I used to work out no matter what. Like last night I only slept two hours because I uh, had to take the red eye. I got or I got in super late and, you know, whatever, time change, all these things. On any other time, like in the last 10 years, I'm working out today regardless because I had a plan and I got to work out. And it's like it's taken me so fucking long to get to the point where I just – can be like, no, you're not doing yourself any good. It's not always about more. It's got to be about quality. If you want to like get it a little better tomorrow when you're a little more recovered and you have some more sleep, then do it. But this idea that we can just fucking plunge away with our head down forever and we think it's going to produce the results at the same pace we're going, it's just not true. So well, let's go and feed off that, dude, because, you know, we talk about sleep, we talk about training, we talk about other things, you know, and we're, we live it, right? We create all the time. My question for you is like, what are some of your your steps and your practices that you utilize throughout the day when you are creating all day? You know, like walk me through that. Like, what are the things you do? Well, so one of the things I've learned about myself, maybe um, I think probably this stems from fucking having some pretty gnarly ADD. But one of the things I've learned about myself is that if I can stimulate my mind um, in other ways than than thinking, I'll I'll be able to think better throughout the day. So. Like my process is I get up in the morning, I drink coffee and I write because I know like I want my writing to be the best possible version of my thoughts that I can get out into the world. And so that's why I do that first before I've used any bandwidth on emails, on fucking Instagram or Facebook or anything else. It's like, no, I'm just I'm getting my thoughts in the world. And then I know there's going to reach a point somewhere between probably 9 a.m. and noon where I can no longer do that. And so... um at that point, I know that it's time to like deload from mental stimulation, and that's when I try to work out. Like, I try to work out at that time in the day, not necessarily to train, but literally to enhance cognitive function for the rest of the yeah. day. Give myself that break, eat lunch, come back, and then I can work on podcasts or tasks or, or whatever throughout the rest of the day. But coming up with that like sort of battle rhythm for yourself and knowing how your brain thinks, super beneficial. It's funny. I'm gonna, it's funny you bring that whole up. You like you have to like you train in the afternoon or midday to just kind of reset cognitive function. Um, I forgot what book I was reading. I was reading another book about like just the brain in general, and it was talking a lot about this dude. It was talking a lot about 
when we wake up in the mornings, we have a certain type of, of level in our brain that keeps us up for creativity. And as the day goes on, it slowly starts to diminish and lower. And then we get into another type of mood and it kind of understands like it's not homeostasis and not allostasis. It's none of those things, but it's just like the way our brain works on a cognitive function. And the way you want to do that and the way they start talking about is the way you, you adjust this, this, the diminish is when you start feeling yourself on a low, you actually break hmm. and you go do something that's not going to stimulate your brain in that realm. So for instance, and again, it goes back to the whole idea of stop the trauma, right? Like stop the bleeding, all that other stuff. Same thing with that. So for instance, let's say you are writing for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and you start noticing it's getting a little bit harder to write. Stop right there and then and go do something different. Stretch, play your guitar, fucking do burpees, go do something, take the dog, do something completely, totally different that takes your mind off of that for 10 to 15 minutes. Come back and notice how that level is actually level back out to be able to produce a little bit more. Mm. Um, it's, it, it makes sense now why the Marine Corps makes you teach for 45 minutes, break for 15, teach again for 45 minutes, break for 15, or just a military in general when I was an instructor was because of the fact I noticed, I was, hey, man, I was able to create the whole time during that 45 minutes while I'm talking off this PowerPoint. I was able to develop, 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 and all of a sudden take a break, go use the bathroom, come back, all right, develop, 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 and boom. Um, and it's kind of the same idea that I've gone with this too here. So like, you know, you found your way of just taking your mind off completely. Mine too is like, if I'm doing something for 45 minutes or if I caught myself there for 90 minutes, I get off and I go ahead and, and recover. So the idea you can use is for every 30 minutes, rest five minutes. Mm. If you want to go ahead and break it down, right? So for 60 minutes, you're resting 10 minutes. For 90 minutes, you're resting 15. For two hours, you're resting 20 plus, right? Mm. Like if you're sitting there creating for two hours or doing some for two hours, the same thing for people at work. Let's go ahead and bring this off of this, right? People who sit at a desk all day at work, who look at numbers and do all that kind of stuff, like that becomes very tedious. And it becomes very just brain dead, right? Like, but imagine how if you were to break that up throughout the day, it would just create you to be more in tune with what you're doing. Boom, boom. And that's why you see these places like Google, Apple, all these fucking places who have like sleeping pods and have video game rooms and have all these different things so that you're able to continue developing creating. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that's why a lot of times, you know, people will work nine to five and they don't have the energy to go to the gym, even though they haven't done anything all day. It's because they're fucking mentally exhausted. And yeah. one of the things that's really good about adding exercise specifically, like I told you, like, you know, in a perfect world and, you know, I got to, mm -hmm. this is basically my routine when I'm not working for the military, but in a perfect world, that first workout for me, it's a mental deload. And on top of that, you know, there's a book called Spark and I can't remember who wrote it, but uh, essentially, he talks about this thing that you ha this thing when you exercise, you're actually rewiring neural pathways. You create yeah. something called brain derived neurotropic factor BDNF, and that BDNF actually helps you. Um, and I, I might be butchering this, but that BDN BDNF actually it literally enhances your IQ. It literally enhances your cognitive function. And so then when you go to learn things after post exercise, you can recall facts better. You can you literally be, make yourself smarter. And so that's why in a perfect world, it's like I would create, empty my thoughts, but then I would stimulate my brain in a different way. Uh, and then when I came back to it, I would feel, you know, more ready. Yeah. And, and that kind of goes back to that. I'm probably going to butcher this, this, this name, all this name also, but it's called, it's called sensory numera, sense, sensory numera. I forgot to pronounce it. Everyone knows my, my speaking is not always the best, but <laughs> I go with it, but it pretty much is the same thing as the whole baseline of cognitive function and the whole idea when you talk about working a nine to five job. If you go ahead and not stimulate your brain for that, for that time period for nine to five, guess what happens to your brain? It just naturally just shuts off to where now you're like, I don't like you get off work. I just got to go pick my kid up and go home and do whatever else. I don't want to go work out. I don't want to do anything else. When realistically, maybe if you were to go work out for 30, 45 minutes, you know, when you pick your kid up now, you're actually going to be more there to hang out and be aware instead of just kind of going through the motions with, you know, with your kid. But that's something that, you know, is huge, man. And I think a lot of people miss that. I think a lot of people miss the whole, you know, being curious understanding that, you know, it's an unconventional difference, right? A lot of people look at creativity as a bad thing nowadays, and it shouldn't be, right? Just because you like to take time to yourself for an hour to create something, that is not bad. That is actually good. It's going to help you out in the long run. It's going to help people around you in the long run, right? Like, it's self-awareness. It's self-care. Fucking who cares, mm -hmm. right? The whole idea, too, with naps, bro, I'm not going to lie to you. I take a nap. I try, I try to take a nap at least every day for 30 minutes. 
Why? Because I've seen what it does for me. It helps increase alertness and it helps increase, uh, increase my creativity, right? Boom. Well, what do I do during the day? That's what I want, you know? So, you know, before coming on the podcast today, instead of taking a nap, I went to go train. Yeah. And I came back here and I'm ready to rock. I'm not going to lie to you. Before the pot, before training, I was mentally smoked. Why? Because I had been programming already all morning. I've been creating some stuff. I'm getting ready to start banging out all these new programs onto a spreadsheet and like, you know, send them up to hire to see how they look. And just mentally zoned. I was like, man, I don't, okay, cool. Went to go train, bro. Came back, ready to rock and roll. Here we are now. We're an hour into this and, you know, coming with all these ideas. But again, though, is, is because I understood I had to break. I had to break. I had to do that. But sleep is huge. And I think a lot of people miss that. If you can get a nut, get good night of sleep, your creativity is going to be there. If you can get a nap during the day, your creativity and your alertness and just in general is going to, your, your life quality just increases tenfold. Yeah, for sure. And I, you know, I think that comes from just learning yourself and you know, that's what we've been kind of hitting on this whole time, but it's, you know, you got to learn yourself. You got to, fi- you got to figure out what you need the discipline to do. And then also too, like, look, I, I love to work hard more than most people I know. I just fucking love to work. But at the end of the day, like I think, you know, if you look back on your life and you say you worked real hard and that's all you can say about it, like you might be kind of bummed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas if you say like you really took the time to create quality shit in the world, you know, I think that's, I don't know. I, I think that's got to be part of the equation for people too. Definitely. I think I'm going to put this out for the listeners who are listening. You know, when you do listen to us, tag us in something that you would, you, you would like to create, like, you know, what is it you're creating now? Or do you have, have you ever thought about something that you wanted to create? Um, and make you guys think a little bit because yeah. I, I mean, creating is a fucking, it's a lot of fun. Like if you were to ask me that I was going to be doing this for a living, I'd be fucking like, what, you want me to create stuff for a living? Okay, cool. You want to help, then it's going to help athletes become better. Like, okay, cool. Like, but at the same time though, like that's self for, that's like self care for me. Right. I enjoy doing that. So for the listeners listening, you know, what is it you want to create? You know, let us know, tag us, comment, whatever else, but let us know what do you want to create or what is it that you're creating? Mm -hmm. Um, that is outside your comfort zone or outside your normal everyday life that not many people realize or know. Yeah, I agree. I love to see that shit. Cause also too, you know, like by doing that, you're, you're putting it out into the universe. You're that's a step, man. That's a huge step by saying, I want to do this thing in the world and then putting it out. You know, there's other, now people are going to hold you a little more accountable and they're going to say like, what, what happened? I thought you were creating X, Y, or Z. So it's like, yeah. you can't really shrink back when you get fucking scared. So I, well, it's, a, it's the same thing too, dude, with the Instagram whole post, right? Like why do you like, right? Like realistically, like if you ask someone like why they did something, right? There's always an action behind, there's always a reason behind why someone did something. Yeah. Right. And I can give yours for my, give you an example. The whole po- photo I put creating, right. Put that post on there. Why did I, cre- why did I put that? Because I was in a place of creating and it held me accountable. Right. Like people are like, Oh, he's, he's creating. Oh, I posted about the 5k thing or whatever else. Why? Because it kept me accountable of writing this out. Or it was just something that I wanted to let people know, like, Hey, there are things that are out there and like, how would it be accepted? And it was a really good thing, you know? So Again, like you said, we talked about it. Mother Nature is a hell of a thing, and we're only trying to improve and, and gain in, in her reach, right? And because there's no defining Mother, mother Nature. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, so. no, I mean, that's it, man. We're all, we're all working within the constraints of, of who we are, but I think that there's a lot more of who we are we could actually be if we took the time to um, be disciplined and smart in our approach. So I think it's really yeah. good point. Hell yeah. Thanks for listening to Lionheart Radio. I hope that the information from today's show will make you fitter, happier, and healthier. For the show notes of this episode and every episode, head to www.lionheartrad.io. Yep, just like Lionheart Radio. And please, if you have the time, head over to iTunes and give us a five-star rating. It really helps us to know that we're on the right track in delivering you reliable information and value. As always, feedback is welcome. If you have any comments on the show or would like to suggest a guest, Send me an email at rick at louavive.com. That's L-U-A-V-I-V-E dot com. Thanks for your support, and we will see you next time. <laughs> Bitch, I feel good. Don't I look stupendous? My shine is so endless, and shit you can do to end this. Even when I'm dead, niggas still gon' bump that chip shit. Coke, white, escalate on sixes for you dipshit. So you won't forget this. Midwest, nigga, be the coldest. Cleveland,